Guilt has for generations haunted the men in my family. Or maybe it was just my dad, I don't know. <laughs> Boy, did that poor man feel guilty all the time. Before dying, my father wrote a letter to tell all his children goodbye, and when I showed it to my wife, Martina, who had never met my father, her only comment was, that man died feeling guilty about everything. I had never noticed that until my wife told me, but she is like that. My wife is really good at reading people. She knows what's up with anyone right away. And she knows that if there's one thing that I got from my father, it's that I feel guilt all the time too. I feel that I don't do enough, that I'm not a good father, a good husband, that I need to do more. She knows that I feel all that, but she says that she knows it's not true. What she doesn't even ever know, on the other hand, is what she wants to eat. <laughs> Which is why it's a good thing that if there's something else that I got from my father is my love for cooking. And I want to pass it on to our daughter, Matilde, too. I started getting Matilde involved in the kitchen when she was almost two years old. Back then, I didn't have enough time or energy to come up with ideas for meals every day. And Martina, my wife, not only never knows what she wants to eat, she also only eats a piece of toast when I'm not home to cook. In that sense, we are a very cliche couple. She's like, I'm so hungry. And I'm like, well, what do you want to eat? And she's like, I don't know. And I'm like, well, what do you do when you want to eat and I'm not home to cook? And she's like, I don't. I just have toast. <laughs> In every other sense, we are not so cliche. Let me put it this way. We once went to the Magic Castle, that castle in Hollywood where you go to have dinner and watch magic shows and you have to dress all fancy, and Martina wanted to go to see some cool magic tricks or illusions, Michael. <laughs> but I wanted to go to dress like a princess and dine in a castle. <laughs> and it's these kinds of things that make us a great team. It's that love. It's food that will tear us apart. <laughs> so when Matilde, my daughter, was about to turn two, we started buying those boxes that come with a recipe and all the ingredients perfectly measured so nothing is wasted and you don't even have to think. Sometimes those recipes come with things that Martina doesn't like to eat, like lettuce. But she eats it anyway because she's a big girl. Sometimes the recipes come with things that I don't like to eat. And today is one of those days. The recipe is pasta with broccoli. I hate broccoli because I don't like the taste of fart in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but Martina says that I, it's my turn to be a big girl and eat it anyway. But I'm not a big girl. If anything, I'm a grown woman. So I'm going to make the pasta with broccoli with my daughter, and I'm going to eat it. Matilde is one year and eight months old. There is not much she can do. She is useless, which is coincidentally what my father liked to call me most of the time. <laughs> and I'm sure he felt very guilty about it. <laughs> Matilde mostly helps with spices and gets bored very quickly and gives up and just goes away to play with her toys or something. And then the pasta is done, and I have to drain the boiling water in the sink. But before doing it, the recipe says that I have to save a cup of boiling pasta water to thicken the sauce. I've seen chefs doing this a million times and I never bothered to do it. But today I'm trying new things. So before draining the water, of course, I save a cup and I put it on the countertop. Then I check that Matilde is far away from the boiling water because I have to turn around to drain the pasta in the sink. I see that Matilde is far away and I proceed to do it with the help of my wife. And the second I start pouring the water, I hear Matilde behind me screaming for her life. It's the most horrendous scream I have ever heard. <laughs> I turn around and I see that by some black magic movements, Matilde has teletransported behind me where I left a cup of boiling water. And she reached out to grab the cup and because she's too short, she grabbed it from the top and spilled the cup of boiling water on her face, torso, and leg. 
My wife is petrified. She doesn't know what to do. But I have a history of home accidents because I'm an idiot. <laughs> so I quickly pick her up, remove her clothes, and put her body under the cold water in the sink. I turn to my wife and I tell her, we have to go to the hospital right now. I have no idea where the hospital is, but Martina is ready. Of course she's ready. She knows how to read people and likes magic. <laughs> she says, there's an urgent care room some blocks away. We immediately get in our red Prius and I break the record for the fastest a Prius has ever been driven, which is not that hard. You just have to drive faster than 35 miles per hour. <laughs> Martina goes in the back making sure that the straps on Matilda's child seat don't touch her burnt skin. It looks all red like there's blood ready to come out pouring any minute, but it doesn't. After I park, we very carefully remove her from the car and we rush to the front desk where they tell us that we are at the wrong place. We need to go to the emergency room, not the urgent care room. The cultural shock in this immigrant is insane. There are two different types of places to go to when something happens to your health in the US and A? Is that what the difference between urgency and emergency actually is? I try to distract myself from the guilt of leaving that cup on the counter by thinking these things on the car on the way to Torrance Memorial. When we get to the emergency room, they put us in a small room to wait for the nurses. Matilde is in a lot of pain, and the only thing keeping her calm is the TV they have in the room where they're playing Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back. And if there's one thing that I want to pass on to my daughter besides cooking, that's Star Wars. And what's even worse, the scene playing at that exact moment is when Darth Vader says to Luke, No, I am your father. And Luke screams, No! And I also want to scream, No! But I don't want a doctor to come running thinking that something happened to Matilde and then having to explain that I'm screaming because my daughter just got the most important part of the trilogy spoiled. <laughs> a little later, later, the nurses come to put an IV in my daughter. But she's so small, they can't find a vein. They keep poking all over while she screams and kicks. Four nurses have to hold her while we can only watch. They tell us that they have to do it because getting burned can dehydrate your body. It makes no sense. How can water make you dehydrated? I guess, well, heat does evaporate water, so maybe that's what happened. I, I, I'm no doctor. Don't worry about my thought process. I'm an idiot. I'm just saying that to myself to stay calm. After poking my daughter for a while, the nurses give up on the IV and were sent to the intensive care unit for burnt people. Matilde has second degree burns and she has to stay at least one night in observation. We ask if we can both stay with her that night and then say that we can, but just for that night, if she has to stay more, only one of us can stay. And we're like, yeah, sure, it's going to be more than one night. Yeah, sure, of course. I have never felt this much guilt in my entire life. Those are the times I felt guilty were amateur. These are the Olympic games of guilt. I was the one cooking. I was the one who left the cup of boiling water within reach of her hands. And nothing confirms my feeling of guilt more than my friend who, without me even mentioning my guilt to him, won't stop saying, Frank, it's not your fault. <laughs> the next day, a horrible doctor comes to see Matilde. He would even get near her. How are you checking the wounds of a burnt kid if you didn't even touch her or get near her? He says that she has to stay more days because of the risk of infection, because they have to change her bandages all the time to prevent that from happening. My wife and I get very determined. We explain to the doctor that we are completely capable of changing the bandages ourselves. We can do it because my wife eats her lettuce and I eat my broccoli and we're both big girls. We can do anything. <laughs> The doctor is amazed by our determination and allows us to go home because he knows we're not just two big girls, we're grown women. <laughs> so he tells the nurses to explain to us how to change the bandages and we go home. That week I don't go to work, I stay home to take care of Matilde. Her face, arm and chest are pretty hurt. She looks like she's wearing the Peruvian national soccer team's jersey. I'm terrified about the long-term scars that she will have, and it's all my fault. I failed her, my daughter. I failed as a father. 
I felt as a man, but soon enough, she got better and her skin went back to normal as if nothing had happened. Eventually, she joined me in the kitchen again and she stays away from hot things, not because she remembers the accident, but because every time she gets near something hot, I scream, watch out, stay away, do you wanna get burnt again? <laughs> because guilt made me more careful. <laughs> and Matilda listens to me because she knows I won't fail her again. Not because I'm a grown woman, but because she is my little girl. Thank you. Thank you. Great trainer, everybody.